Hi, I'm Jim Morris. I'm one of the founding partners of Transformer Insights. I am here uh, at CES 2024 uh, at the IoT M2M Council's booth. Um, here we are with an with a attractive backdrop. And I am talking to uh, John Carpenter, who is the North America sales leader for Ignion. Um, and we're going to be talking about asset tracking. Yep. Now, asset tracking is an incredibly, it's an incredibly interesting topic, very diverse. There are so many assets that can be tracked out there, you know, ranging from those in extremely remote locations to, to those that find themselves in hard to reach in, in radio wave terms locations to, to those which are in urban areas or even urban canyons yep. and basements. Um, and and, and the, meanwhile, the benefits of tracking these devices can be enormous, just yep. knowing where things are, being able to go straight to the cable drum that you need in the yard for the particular job that you've got. So yep. just being able to track that stuff is really important. Yep. Um, there must be some challenges there. Do you want to explain, do you want to go through there, some of the challenges? There are a lot of challenges there and the use cases that you described, there are a lot of environmental factors. Of course, everybody wants, wants their devices to be smaller. There are a lot of design factors that, that come into there. One of the main things that, that we see is just the, the environmental factors where you have shipping containers that are surrounded by, by metal. <clears throat> there are industrial environments that have all sorts of environmental factors, and there are even trackers for live bodies, whether that be a human being with a, with a wristband or a badge, or cattle tracking, or even pet tracking, which you have a human body involved that affects the RF performance. So we have those types of challenges that, that uh, really put a lot of pressures on, on designers to find something that works. Yes, so 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 you're talking about environment, as this is the really local environment to, to a tracking mm -hmm. device. So the fact that it's on, on a container, and when I say on a container, it could be on top of it or inside yep. it, yep. and that makes a difference. And Absolutely. if it's on a cow and that cow turns round, that makes a difference as well. <laughs> right? So, yep. so it's, a, it's a really detailed yep. environmental consideration. Yep. So, so, so how are you helping to address some of those challenges? So, as you pointed out, the location of the device is, is very, very important, but also the device itself. Antennas or an RF circuit will react differently if it's on metal, in, in metal inside of an, a metal uh, enclosure, uh, depending on what else is, is on actually the board. And as I said, if something is placed on a live body, that has a direct effect on the performance of, of the antenna. So we're able to simulate that and help customers tune, tune through that. A, 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 another key factor that we see is the battery performance for these devices. They're often used in a remote location, so the battery performance is, is obviously extremely important. The efficiency of, of the antenna circuit, or the RF circuit, becomes very, very important. So we can we can help help with that with our with our design process. Um, in addition to that, time to market is obviously important. There are a lot of companies out there doing asset trackers. Um, so it's important to get your products out, out there in time. There are also uh, certification issues that, that need to be addressed, with which are difficult. And antennas get detuned with the materials that we talked about. Antennas can get detuned, and so the design process has to take that into account to keep you from iterating design after design after design. Yes, and and potentially even get detuned as a result of putting put, putting an established. Um, uh, Solution, get a hardware solution in a different enclosure in order to make it more robust. The enclosure makes a difference, and then where that enclosure, where that device is placed, as I said, if it's on metal or on a body or on plastic, on wood, whatever, every one of those will react differently. So all, all of those need to be taken in, into account and, and simulated for if possible. So, so it's pretty clear that the RF environment at the level of an individual device, if you really want to get great performance out of it yep. and thus extend the battery life, which yep. is what really makes the business case, especially in these remote locations. Yep. What What's really important is to get the right RF performance, yep. but that can get impacted by all sorts of local yep. things that are going on. So, how do you? What, what are you doing to to, to, so to help? So, there's th th three three things that, that that I would suggest. Number one applies to anybody, and that would be consider your antenna first, which is unfortunately often not done. A lot of a lot of designs will pick the RF module, lay out the board, and then put on an antenna, and they're at a big disadvantage there because that antenna may not work or it may not be maximum gain and gain in efficiency. So we would recommend that anybody consider the antenna first. You don't have to pick the antenna first, but it should be the first thing that goes on, on your board. Yes. Uh, number two, I would say get help in, in putting these, th these two things together. And we'd recommend somebody get help. And Ignion does have an online design tool where if you give okay. us the size of your board and your frequency, as, as well as, of course, the communication protocol, whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or GPS or, or whatever, give us those three things and we will help you select the antenna. We'll place it on the board and we'll help you with an initial 
matching network to show you what your peak okay. performance can be. So you've got you've got a head start in that way. Um, also, with that help, after you've got that initial design, Ignion will help with engineering support for any customer who needs that. And that is different from what I've seen in, in other companies. Generally, they have to be very, very high volume or pay a high NRE. We'll help any customer who needs it with that initial layout and also coach them through the entire design, design process all the way up to certification. And that does bring me to another thing to consider is the detuning of the antenna. As we talked about, you take a circuit, you put that in an enclosure which might be metal or some other material and then you put it in this working environment which could be on a live body or on a steel container or, or whatever that is. All of those serve to detune the antenna so that initial design won't work the same way when it's in the environment. Ignion's solution is a, a we call it a non-resonant antenna. It doesn't have a preset frequency that enables us to take our antenna component, put it on the board. We use the ground plane as the actual resonating element. We include a matching network which tunes that, that ground plane to the specific target frequency. Then our antenna actually boosts that signal to, 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 to help the signal. But because we don't have a specific preset frequency, once you have that detuning de effect, and that will happen with any device and any antenna, you yeah. will have detuning. But because we don't have a native frequency, we're able to retune it to back to the target frequency where another antenna, if it gets detuned outside of the band set for that antenna, mm -hmm. you've got to change the antenna and probably start your whole design over. So it's a, it's a big advantage in using what we call this virtual antenna technology. So, so you're helping people sweat out the, those last increments of performance. So we help the them device. every step through the process, but yes, that, that, that last bit it, is very make important. Make sure it's absolutely functioning yep. as well as it can. Ready for certification. Okay, and and I'm guessing that the um, that the, 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 there are increasing challenges, particularly with your know, radios and devices. You've got multi-radio environments, yep. and you've got NTN, you've got convergence of satellite and yep. cellular, and you know, all sorts of things all going of it. all drop down with everyone trying to push that down onto one chipset. Yep. Uh, how's how's that adding to your complexity? So it definitely adds to the complexity, as you said. There are multiple frequencies. Every asset tracker is going to have. GPS, GNSS, it's, it's likely going to have Bluetooth, um, and, and most of them now will have LTE. In addition to that, we're seeing NB, IoT, and ultra wideband for precise positioning. There's a lot of, uh, as, as you well know, a lot of machine to machine out there, which, which is a lower data rate, but it, it needs to be very, 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 very exact. Um, in those cases, we do have antenna products that are two and three ports. You can combine several frequencies into one, but also, as you said, there are new frequencies coming in all the time, which just adds to the complexity of the board. So having a, an online design tool and engineering support has proven to be very, very valuable for the customer. So again, for somebody looking for that help for us, come to Ignion.io and you'll see the online design tool and it will help you with engineering support from there to okay. coach you through what can be a very challenging process. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so John Carpenter of Ignion, thank you very much for joining me. It's been really interesting to hear about some of the, some of the, some of the trials of the uh, antenna environment and the, uh, the RF world. Um, sounds great, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you, I enjoyed it.